Daniel, I fear I may be enamored with a pipe dream. That was a complex sentence. Hang on, let me dissect that. Yes. I'm on board. So this idea of whiskey and coffee. Yeah. And you'll see it like these movies, maybe like a gritty detective, and he's got his cup of black coffee and he pours some whiskey Plastic in there. Low drawer. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've experimented with this a few times myself. The results have been lackluster. I even asked the community, is coffee and whiskey a thing? And I was very surprised at how many people who have tried it with black, like, yeah, it's, it's not that great. Only it's, once I've ever liked it and it was an Irish coffee and it's got the cream, it's well, all doctored up. It's not the same thing. It's not. Granted, I, I've had some really nice Irish coffees to your point. Mm -hmm. uh, we did an episode recently about Irish coffee. But black coffee it is very similar to the way that people who drink whiskey and the ones that prefer to drink it neat, mm -hmm. people that drink coffee and they want to get like the purest experience possible, yeah. they're drinking it black. By the time you put in sugar, it's kind of like putting rocks in whiskey. By the right. time you put in cream, it's like, ah, oh, you might as well be making a cocktail with your whiskey. Right. How often do you drink coffee? Every day. Okay. All day. So we know our way around the coffee. <laughs> yeah. But is there a way to experience the purity of whiskey and the purity of coffee, like black and neat? And it work. I don't know. These are the coffees that we're using. You've probably seen them all over the place. And we wanted to basically do this tasting, these samples with something that's very easy to get your hands on, very common. Here's our dark, our dark roast from Community and our light uh, roast from the Green Mountain. Okay, so you're the light roast guy and I'm the dark roast guy. I don't know why you have to play favorites, but here you go. Because I want to. All right, oh nice. Did you pick my mug? Girls just wanna have fun. Oh, girls just wanna. Can you falsetto? Ooh. Oh, hell, that's really good. Pretty good, actually. All right. Yeah, drop this whole whiskey thing. I got four whiskeys. I picked four whiskeys. Yeah. I tried to pick things I knew everybody could get. Okay. That classic sound of quality coffee being made. <laughs> So I got four classic whiskeys that are easy to get and yeah. not overly expensive. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to start with like what's typically like the bourbon or do we want to start light? Let's start with the bourbon. Okay. It's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a bourbon, we got an Irish, we got two different kinds of scotch. We're kind of gonna run the gamut of some very commonly accessible whiskeys. I went with Wild Turkey 101. High enough proof that it should Get us there. You really should just start. You want to try it first just to set a baseline? I've had this coffee dozens of times. I haven't. It's everywhere. Mm. All right, roughly an ounce of whiskey. Okay. A little, mix, a little mix up. Really. Oh, the nose. Really jumps out of that. You know smell? Mine smells like sourdough bread. Smell this. Mine is. Yeah. You see what I mean? Mine is like, uh, whoo. It's like a sour cherry. Yeah, yours went cherry, and yeah. mine went sourdough bread. Yeah, yeah. This is reminding me of already, I haven't tasted it yet, already why I'm not really super excited about it. I think the heat and just the rising. It evaporates things really quickly. It makes the ethanol just bam, yeah. right there. It's just a hot alcohol I nose. I kind of like the bready note. Did yours subside a little bit? No. You gotta get right on the nose as soon as you put the whiskey in, otherwise See, it goes away. Yours this is, is nice. nicer, the dark roast with the thing, but yeah. still, I don't know, we'll see. Oh, I, I like it. <laughs> do you? Yeah. What do you like about it? It softened the sharpness of the weird Keurig taste. Mmm. Yours is all wrong. Yeah, the dark nose is it. Yours this, tastes like soy sauce. This? Yeah. Gave way too much room to that little bit of bourbon we put yeah. in. Yeah. That, the, the dark coffee, roast the handled The dark it. roast is holding its own. Yeah. It's still not something that I would like be thinking, Man, I really, yeah, it's just, it's not as bad as I was expecting. You can live with it. That's not really a great marker. That's, yeah, that's let's, not, move, let's move over to Irish whiskey. Dude, that would be the most hilarious campaign for Keurig. Yeah. It's like, Keurig, how do you know when it's done? All right, we're moving on to Tullamore Dew. Sure. Do the do. I don't think that's their campaign. All right, so again, do you like an ounce? I like about an ounce, yeah. Babbity boop. Babbity boop a boop. Yeah, you, we're not measuring, because you should never measure something like no, this. No, that's not what the grizzled detective does. Now you got an instinct to that He shit. sits down and he's he's balding, and his suit's too small because he's getting fat and his wife left him, and he's, uh, he's Pound the pavement? Uh, bullshit, instincts. I'm on the case. Research and investigation? I'm on bullshit. The bullshit. He pulls all out his glass, he pulls it in there, and all right, what do we got? <laughs> I can't smell any whiskey, can you? One, it's a lower proof. It's also a little bit of a softer, milder, sweeter set of flavors than like a bourbon, which is gonna have a lot more presence, especially at the 101 proof. I am getting sort of like a caramel cream. 
Like it's a flavored, like a pistachio coffee flavor. I'm getting, like, I'm getting like a little bit of a nutty wheat bread, but I'm not getting anything recognizably Irish. Again, it just softened the community, but not in a way that was as good as the bourbon. I, I think I'm not enjoying like hot alcohol mm -hmm. with black coffee. Uh, so you get the bitter and the burn at the same time. Yeah, it's not even really the burn, it's just like the ethanol flavor. There's nothing with it, married with it, the layers and all this stuff. It's just like, here's an ethanol layer plopped right on top. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I think the thing that I like about black coffee, a lot of the same notes that you'll hear coffee connoisseurs and lovers describe uh, coffee with. Very, very similar notes whenever people are describing whiskey. And same set of very, very similar notes whenever people are describing cigars. And tea. So I think the Irish, I enjoy, I'm enjoying this better than the bourbon, but it's, go ahead. I'm not. Okay. The dark and the yeah. bourbon you like better than the it dark and the It vanishes it, but leaves the ethanol thing. All right. I think, I think I'm, I think I'm getting tits. Is it a tit? Yeah. Fuck. God. But no, it's it's more of a muscle with a slight layer. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the layer is thinner up here than yeah. it is down yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as the dark roast is coming off, what what whiskey is next? Let's do like an easy Glenfiddich space side, you know, Highland sure. thing. Hmm. Whoa, whoa! That jumped. The malt yeah. went nuts on the, uh, this. It became super malty floral. Yeah, this is a granola bar with none of the sugar in it, mixed with some weird flowers. It's like a soggy sourdough. Oh yeah, wait, smell mine. Yours is way more sourdough than mine. It is. Mine I, is more pungent of something else, like burnt granola. I think what we're finding is that the black, the dark roast, is keeping up uh, with the flavors of the whiskey a bit more than the light roast. Yeah. Yeah. None of the sweetness that I liked about, mm -mm. it doesn't show up. No. It's not sweet. It's all of the stuff that's in here that's, that's not sweet. Again, the bourbon was better. Okay. All right. Does it make you feel like a movie character, though? Detective Tits McGillicuddy. That poor whore is killed on the Fifth Street. Man, she has no one in her life, and some John just took her out, and I'm gonna bring her justice. So, unless the smoky scotch, because we're getting into the smoky flavors. This is a bit of a Hail Mary at this point. Yeah, I just, I want something to stand up to it and still remind me of whiskey. And, and not, not have a like a weird flavor. hot ethanol layer. Yeah. yeah. And then it, maybe we'll see if we can not turn it into a cocktail, but if there's ways for us to approach coffee and whiskey and find a common ground that's nice. Now, what smoky scotch did you bring us? Oh, there you go. Lafroig. Sure. Yeah, because come on. There you go. And there you, oh, there you go. You got it. Wow, that's a dirt fire. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know the people say, man, I don't drink black coffee, it's just too harsh. Yeah, yeah. Leroy says, yeah, sit the f down, I'll show yeah. you harsh. Yeah. This yeah. is. <laughs> wow, Woo it's just hot, it's hot Lefroy, man. I'm getting the iodine, like, no, it's the Band-Aid layer. Like the Band-Aid thing in there. Oh, wow. That was so aggressive. Even in coffee. Ooh, ooh. You know what that is? Uh-huh. You know, like the charred ends of brisket. Yeah. The charred bits. Yeah. This is like the char char. There's no sweetness yeah, left. It's just crumbling. It's just ash. charcoal, savory charcoal. You know what that reminds me of is when you um, accidentally over char a marshmallow and your your leftover bite of the marshmallow yeah. is just the black ashy bits. Yeah. This is the burnt ends of the burnt end. Yeah. The aftertaste of it. Yeah. Yeah. The burnt ends of the. <laughs> it is weird how meaty and savory it is. That is fun huh. for just doing something weird and getting like a ridiculous experience. Yeah, not enjoyable though. You know, you're not gonna wake up in the morning and hey, you know what I wanna do? <laughs> Fuck up my coffee. Uh, that happened. I don't need to, I'm just gonna throw this out. Okay. We don't yeah. need to circle back to That's this That's fair. One. This episode is sponsored by Goats Overnight. This is an idea whose time has come. How many of us have been sitting at home, alone, bored, and we have the thought, man, I need a goat and I need it Oats. 
This episode is brought to you by Oats Overnight, packed with functional whole foods, over 20 grams of protein, and premium flavors. Oats Overnight is a great on-the-go breakfast. So the first time I tried Oats Overnight, I took it home and I, you know, we tried it and I passed on the sponsorship. It's not a big deal. Happens. We pass on things all the time. Um, and it wasn't bad and it was good. I just didn't love it. And uh, my wife had made the, she prepared it for me and she asked, well, when's the sponsor bit coming out? And I tell her, I, I tell her that I passed. What? She had loved it. She had tried a different flavor than I did. She made me promise to try it again. And she did the thing. She basically, you get your, your included blender bottle. You put in eight ounces of milk or milk alternative. Then you put in the pack of the oats overnight. You put it in a fridge. It's ready in three to four hours, but usually you want it cold for like a morning on the go breakfast. And she says, one more time, let's do the green apple and uh, the cinnamon there. Yeah. This was, ex this is my flavor. Between the varieties that they have, there's gonna be something here that you really enjoy. And the on the go stuff, this is where it's the most helpful and valuable to me. It tastes really good, on the go, super convenient, but it's also double the protein of regular oats. It's got less sugar, and it's the perfect ratio of complex carbohydrates and the proteins, like the chia seeds and maca powder and all this healthy stuff. Oats overnight, the link is in the description down below. You do Whiskey Tribe 15 for 15% off your entire order. Very tasty, very convenient, and it's how I annihilate all the young whippersnappers in my life with raw power from us. Uh, uh. <laughs> now I need you to translate okay. this opportunity sure. to the goat. Okay. <laughs> I think probably the issue is the temperature thing. Cold brew. You think that would improve? I think it, there's a lot more room for a whiskey and a cold brew coffee, if it's black, to play nicely than if it's hot. I well, think it's- for one, it won't explode the ethanol out of the glass. Yeah, you don't just have like this wave after yeah. wave of ethanol flying up in the air. But this, we had oh, Alex. What is that? This is a cold brew. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like legit cold brew? So. That's time consuming. This is cold brew from- Well done. Virginia Commonwealth Roasters. We've been keeping it in the fridge, nice and cold. Okay. It's been going for like, what, 24 hours, Alex? Do you, wait, hours. is it like a powder? Oh, it's like a tea bag. Yeah, basically. Oh, nice. These things right here. So let's do just a... I'm gonna stick with the bourbon because that was my favorite hot. First, I'm just gonna try the naked cold brew. Good call. Yeah. Ooh. Some nuttiness, chocolatey. Yeah. This still has a lot of that flavor, but it didn't bring up any of the acidity with the flavor. I'm gonna do bourbon, what do you want? Just try the bourbon. Now first, I'm no, betting that the no, nose no, is better. 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 Oh, you have more coffee. Yeah, you got a little more. Maybe not that much more, but. <laughs> All right. Okay, right away, I can smell actual sweetness oh, of bourbon. Oh, yeah. Right, and not the, ethanol. Right. Just that sweet, and that's what I was not entirely on board with originally. Right. I'm getting coffee notes, I'm finding whiskey notes, and I'm not finding the immediate thing, to your point, that mm -hmm. the turn off for hot, black coffee with a bit of whiskey in there. This now reminds me of that clingy sweet flavor I sometimes get on certain uh, fancy coffees that I'm not a huge fan of. It tastes sweetened. Wow. And a little watery. Like, less, more watery than it was before we did that. Well, you keep in mind, like, the coffee has a ton of water in it. Yeah, but it wiped out the finish. That's what it was. Oh, the whiskey finish? It wiped finish? out the finish. The whiskey finish. Either. Yeah. The finish of both the coffee and the whiskey are gone. But there was a lingering coffee note to that aftertaste of the cold brew before I put the whiskey in. Mm -hmm. Now there's no aftertaste. It just goes straight into water. For me, this doubles down on the toffee yep. and a little bit of the caramel. It, I'm not finding that cherry note that I was no, finding in the, not yeah, at all. the first time when it was hot. Huh. So far, this is my favorite. I think the temperature makes a tremendous difference. I like the hot coffee with the bourbon better. Mm -mm. We're moving on to Tullamore Dew. Let's go cold Irish. Uh, I it, don't smell, wait a minute. Cookies. It is a more subdued nose than the hot coffees for sure. Sugar cookie. Coffee flavored sugar cookie. Yeah, it's like you dipped a sugar cookie in coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Oh, that's like vanilla cream. Yeah. It's a temperature thing. For yeah. Me. If you get cold coffee, mm -hmm. and then you pour in a bit a bit of whiskey, way more enjoyable than the hot stuff. Already, yeah, I like this better than I like my hot coffee bourbon. Let's move on. So. Pour me, baby. Detective Tits McGillicuddy just needs the night before have set up his cold brew in the fridge. This guy's right. gotta come over in huge tits. Mmm, <laughs> honey. Mm. 
honey. Okay. Honey and then oats. You don't seem pleased with the honey and oats. I don't know yet. I am, it's definitely better. Let me say yeah. this. If the standard was set with the hot coffees, the dark roast and light roast with the Glenfiddich, that is much better than the hot standard with the cold brew. I just realized what it is. It's putting coffee in, into your Cheerios. <laughs> wow. Ooh, I, actually, I like that. It's got more character. More floral. Like yeah. the, the floral note, Yeah. it doesn't lose all the sweetness. No, it actually brought out some things that I would have called floral in a coffee. I actually like that better. Wow. I suspected mm -hmm. this would be better just because of the way temperature, temperature works with, with whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am genuinely, as the first time I've tried it, mm. I am genuinely surprised at how much better I am liking this black coffee, this cold brew, yeah. and these whiskeys. I agree. Prepare yourself. Yeah. Put on your big boy pants. Yes. We're going Lafroig. Oh, I should have eaten food. Smells smoky. Smells smoky, but. You know what it is? It's chicory. It made it smell like a chicory coffee. It is presenting very differently than the hot coffee. The sweeter notes, which were just obliterated in the hot versions. They're there. Yeah, you can find them. Actually, it smells more like Lafroig. Don't taste any smoke. It's just flat and weird. Not bland. Yeah, the frog, the frog is not meant for coffee. Ugh. How dare you, LeFroig. So, oh, I got indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> Between your old man bowels and my tits. <laughs> you have not had our own barrel aged coffee. No, I had the stuff that they sent us as example of what they could do. Right. But I haven't had ours. This is our first experiment. Ooh, I like that they have a little sliding scale for the flavor intensity. For this first experiment, we didn't want to go really intense with it. That is with the, our coffee roasting par partners at uh, Project Buna. Okay, They yeah. do a lot of experimental stuff and we're gonna be doing a lot of different things with them in the future. And then another roaster we're working with, this is, you know, a bunch of days. Right. This is a bunch of weeks. Whoa. So we wanted to like figure out the impact of that used whiskey barrel. That's critical. It has right. to have been used with whiskey aging. So now we can get that water going again. This smells amazing. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of conversations and back and forth. I want to get your, your input on what you're experiencing. Okay, that's about how much I put You let pound. us know what you're smelling and tasting. Like a kind of nutty, slightly toasty, middle, medium body kind of coffee yeah. roast. I smell just really strong peanut butter. So as we're waiting on the water, whenever we were looking at coffee options for barrel rested stuff, right. there were tons of places that you can get coffee beans from. Yeah. We wanted something where it's not only coffee nerds, right. but it's people that also really loved whiskey. We wanted to be able to do, in the future, as we release more and more, a spectrum of barrel intensities. Right. So you can have stuff that's like, oh, a hint, a nice little hint. Yeah. All the way up to, man, that is like really whiskey and boozy, and I'm picking up those notes. Is that where they came up with that? A Glencairn logo on a sliding scale? Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's, this is gonna be more towards like the subtle end of things. Right. This is Project Boone, and we're about mm -hmm. to try now. The Virginia Commonwealth Roasters, the eight weeks Mm -hmm. Man, the, the intensity scale on this, and much more recognizable. So we're gonna use this to just sort of lightly wet this thing and then we will let that drain. This is about the, this is eyeballing it from what I do at the house with the same proportions and I know exactly how much water I tend to based on eye levels of things. So I get it wet first. This is many, many months in the making. I think some of these conversations may have been pretty freaking Rona. Mm. But to figure out which is the roaster that's actually going to get whiskey enough to really do this nice barrel aging process with the coffee, I think we landed on two really great coffee roasters right out of the mm. gate. Very interested to see what you guys think. All, All right. right. You ready? Yep. Now I can tell you on nose alone, mm -hmm. uh, now I found the whiskey impact. There it is, yeah. It definitely doesn't have that clingy, like offensively sweet. They said dark cherry, rich wood, milk chocolate. I find most of the chocolate on the coffee grounds nose. I'm getting the wood and the chocolate, but not the cherry. I'm getting milk chocolate at the very, very end of the nose. Yeah, yeah that's good. It's yeah. nutty. Yeah. Really nutty. That's gotta yeah. be the coffee bean. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's super good. Our first uh, swing at a barrel aged, barrel rested coffee with Project Buna, the Virginia Commonwealth Roasters. Very limited numbers of 
these things on mm -hmm. the Whiskey Tribe store. The link's gonna be in the description down below if you guys are at all curious. So I'm not quite ready to give up entirely on the Keurig? on the hot coffee dream. There's only one thing left to do. Oh, I think I know what this is. Well, how much bourbon? Uh, do you here, I'll eyeball it from here what because I remembered. What is the like flammability of this? Uh, pretty low. Uh, I've got the dark roast. So do the dark ready? roast? Yes. Sounds normal. So we are effectively brewing coffee with 101 proof bourbon whiskey, completely taking the water out of the process. The only thing brewing this coffee is that bourbon. Wow. It's definitely in there. <laughs> you get it? You getting the ethanol? Yep. <laughs> Like, I'm getting, I'm getting knocked make, around over here. Don't make me laugh. I'm getting knocked around over here. It actually tastes significantly better. So based on the nose, mm -hmm. I'm surprised at how much I'm liking this nose. Yeah. Whenever you dilute a, a, a whiskey mm -hmm. well past where the flavors are living, right. then you get some weird things starting to happen. Which we did with all the water that went yes. into the coffee. All of the coffee water is effectively yeah. diluting all of these whiskeys. And I was like, ah, listen, the whiskey is just giving us weird angles on that flavor. I think we might have made my favorite thing so far. Now what are you doing this time? I'm going in again. That I'm going in one more time to see with what's left. Dude, I'm telling you. Of the whiskey. What did you put in there? Same. The same? Yeah, I just wanted the same thing. So we can share. Yeah, you wanted your I own. I wanted my own. <laughs> it looks like motor oil. I think we <laughs> Whoa! What what is happening? What did you do? I don't know. It's still going. It stopped and then it started back up again. I think it's dying. I think we broke it. <laughs> I oh. think Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, it is. It's strong. Let me, let me put it this way. If you're drinking black coffee, you already like Big Bold flavors. Yeah. And if you're drinking neat whiskeys, you're already drinking Big Bold flavors. Yeah. This is very intense. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps going back for more. It's just, it's so weird. I can't figure it out. <laughs> this is what I imagined coffee and whiskey would be. Me too. But I think whenever people are doing things that aren't like Irish coffees with the sweeteners. Feels like it just it, waters down all the It just waters flavors. down, yeah. But I think whenever I first imagined what Detective Tits McGillicuddy was sipping. This is it. 